Member statements. Member statements. Member for Scarborough Southwest. In the last few weeks, we have witnessed the Premier's dislike of proper process, his dislike of appropriate public consultation, and his dislike of careful cost-benefit analysis. But his utter disrespect for our judicial system is not only appalling, it sets a dangerous precedent. The Premier's Wild West attitude to push this bill through by invoking the notwithstanding clause, a clause that is intended to be used only in exceptional circumstances such as a national security threat, directs us back to this question. Is this really about cost saving or is this personal? Is this the Premier using every tool in his toolbox just to get his petty revenge on Torontonians? Mr. Speaker, it appears that he does not have any problem with the number or cost of politicians as long as they're from his family or close group of friends. Mr. Speaker, like many of my colleagues in this room, I'm a member of provincial parliament, but unlike many of my colleagues in this room who are voting for this bill, I'm actually a proud resident of the city of Toronto, and we, the people of this great city, not only denounce the Premier's callous attitude towards the people's wishes and his plan to misuse the government powers for personal vendetta, but also tell him, enough, you need to stop now. Thank you, Speaker. So once again, I'm going to remind members of the House that it is inappropriate to um, impute motive. Member statements. Member for Whitby. Thank you, Speaker. I'm pleased to highlight the great work underway at Durham College in support of students and youth involved with the development of business ideas and plans. Speaker, if Durham Region's reputation for quality and innovation is to flourish, then we must work to create an environment where businesses can not only start locally but develop as well. Speaker, in that regard, I'm pleased to announce a new partnership between Durham College and 360 Insights, one of Ontario's fastest growing innovative companies located in Whitby. Speaker, 360 Insights is making a significant donation to Durham College's Building Something Amazing capital campaign to support construction of the college's new Centre for Collaborative Educa Education. The goal of the Centre Speaker is to support students and youth in developing their business ideas and plans and getting them to market quickly. Speaker, I applaud the creativity and foresight of both Durham College and 360 Insights in supporting students and youth in developing their business ideas and plans. Speaker, a win-win for all involved and a boost for our local economy in Durham Region. Well Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Beaches East York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. For the past 48 hours, the phone in my constituency office has been ringing off the hook. Constituents have stopped me on the street and on the boardwalk. They've emailed and texted. They have had one message. Please stop Doug Ford and the Conservatives from trampling our fundamental freedoms and our charter rights. Our charter rights matter. They are the very core and the very foundation of our democracy and the values that we as Canadians hold dear. As elected officials, we have a duty to protect those rights above all else. These are the rights for which people have struggled and protested and fought to leave with us. They're the rights for which generations of new Canadians have left their homes behind and travelled here at great cost and great sacrifice to enjoy and give to their children. They are the standard against which we must always strive to measure ourselves as elected officials, as citizens and as people. They are a sacred trust. To toss them so carelessly aside is to toss aside the very best of our society. This decision sets a terrifying precedent, and we should all be vigilant. We in the official opposition will do everything we can to defend what every elected official ought to defend, those rights and freedoms that are the most precious to us as Ontarians and as Canadians. Members, will please take their seats. Member statements. Member for Markham Union. Speaker, I am happy to speak about the event I co-host with MP Bob Soraya this past month. 
On August, 31st, uh, on August 11th, a beautiful and sunny day, MP Bob Soraya and myself had the opportunity to co-host annual Markham Unionville Community BBQ at Wismar Park in Markham. We were ex exceptionally pleased that close to 2,500 constituents joined us, made the BBQ one of the largest annual events hosted by the parliamentarians in Canada. Along with the many of our constituents, friends and volunteers, fellow MPP areas, Babikins, uh, Stofield, uh, Markham Stofield, uh, Logan Canapathy uh, for Markham Thornhill, uh, Michael Passer for Roller, Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill, as well as other local city councillors were able to join us. We were also host Andrew Shear, the federal leader of the opposition uh, of of the official opposition. As you can see, Mr. Speaker, this event for the people includes elected representatives from three levels of government working together to make a great success. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, I want to add not only did this event include food, family, and fun. This event was an event that promoted and featured more than 15 different musical or dance performance groups. Also joining us were the well, Traditional Culture Research Institute of Canada branch, Stem Kids Rock, which is a club that inspired the young generation of. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> member statements. The member for York Southwest. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I rise to speak the unprecedented use of the, uh, the notwithstanding clause, and I'll be voting against this outrageous a needless attack on the rule of law. The notwithstanding clause has never been used in Ontario, and for a good reason. It is a tool that is undemocratic and opens the door to unprecedented power that can be brought to bear against citizens. Most concerning is that the member from Etobicoke North has explicitly promised to use it again if his agenda violates the charter rights. If this passes, it will send a message that the member from Etobicoke North can violate the Charter whenever he so desires to maintain integrity of the rule of law and our democratic institutions. It is high time that we, we all defend democracy, the rule of law, and defend the rights and freedoms of the people of this city, Toronto, and in this great province of ours. Therefore, I will be voting against the use of the with not standing clause and for freedom and democracy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. Member for Guelph. Mr. Speaker, my constituency office is being inundated with people expressing their outrage that the Premier is trampling on their charter rights. Guelph lawyer Carolyn Knapp wrote, and I quote, to justify using the notwithstanding clause to make a law that is unconstitutional because, quote, judges aren't elected is arbitrary and nonsensical, especially when the law reduces elected representation. You can't use democracy as a justification to interfere with democracy, end quote. My constituent Lori wrote, Doug Ford may be premier, but really, nobody is above the law. If he can ignore the courts for Toronto, will he do that to the rest of Ontario? As a voter who cares about respect for the law, I'm asking you, my MPP, please vote against invoking the notwithstanding clause. Mr. Speaker, I want to be very clear to my constituency that I share their outrage. Mr. Speaker, nobody is above the law. Winning a majority government should not entitle anyone to railroad the Constitution and suspend people's fundamental rights. The rule of law and the protection of people's rights are essential to democracy. I want to be clear with my constituents that I know that I will fight for their charter rights and our democracy. Member statements. The member for Peterborough Kawartha. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Man Cup since 1932 has been awarded as the Box Lacrosse Championship for Canada. Last night, the Peterborough Lakers won their 16th Man Cup. I'd like to point
point out that that is the most of any community in Canada in the, uh, or since it has been awarded since 1932. We uh, finished the season with a 12-3-1 record. Our playoff record was an outstanding 12-5, and, and in fact, we swept the team from Maple Ridge to win the Man Cup. If there was any doubt as to whether or not Peterborough is the universe for lacrosse, it was erased last night. Maple Ridge had a single player born in Maple Ridge playing for their team. I'm proud to say that the Peterborough Lakers have 14 of 26 players born and raised in Peterborough, as well as an additional five players from my riding. I'm very proud to say that the Peterborough Lakers repeated this year. It was their second championship in two years and actually their sixth since 2010. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Toronto Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last night, I had the pleasure of attending a public meeting organized by the Corktown Residents and Business Association, a local group of active residents in my riding of Toronto Centre. During the meeting, a Corktown resident named Tricia spoke at length about the government's move to introduce legislation to enact Section 33. She asked me why this government is choosing to demonstrate a total lack of respect for our judiciary system and ram through legislation that is contrary to the wishes of people in her community. Mr. Speaker, I have received hundreds of similar, similar emails from constituents across Toronto Centre since Monday afternoon. To quote one of the emails from a constituent named Gina, Premier, this is outrageous behaviour, shame on you. The reply from the government, crickets. The ruling of the Superior Court is clear. The Premier and his government have violated the rights of Torontonians. Instead of accepting that it has crossed a line, this government has chosen to push through legislation that suspends sections of the Charters of Rights and Freedoms. This is not how a healthy democracy operates. Toronto belongs to Torontonians. Make no mistake about that. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Barry Springwater. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, this weekend, I look forward to joining the thousands of fellow Canadians and Ontarians in carrying the legacy of Terry Fox and his Marathon of Hope. Now, in its 38th year, the annual Terry Fox Run takes place in over 9,000 schools and communities across Canada, including the Terry Fox Elementary School on Livingston Street in Barrie. Since 1992, the support has expanded internationally, with runs taking place in Lima, Peru, and Dakar, and Senegal to Hong Kong. Thank you to all the run organizers and participants for your continuing support of Terry's elusive dream, a cure for cancer. Here, here. I would like to thank Michael McDougall, who is chair of the very Terry Fox Run. We know this event and legacy relies on volunteers like him. I would also like to recognize my friends Allison Stoneman and Jim Petici, who have organized the Terry Fox Run for several years. I want to tell you about the incredible efforts of, world, of Will Dyer, Dwyer, a World War II veteran who lives in Barrie. Will was so inspired after watching the Marathon of Hope on television in 1980, he set a goal to raise $1 million, $1 million for the Terry Fox Foundation. He's now 93 years old. He is knocking on doors and he is raising money and he is only $200,000 short of his goal. Let's help him get, it th get there. Please join us on Sunday in Barrie, 9 a.m. Starts at Centennial Park. You can bike, walk, run, stroller or rollerblade. Do the 5 or 10K. Hope to see you there. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member statements. The member for Flamborough, Grant Flamborough. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's my pleasure to rise today to recognize the industry representatives and stakeholders that participated in the Steel Summit in Hamilton Friday morning. Now, the summit, which Shai also attended, took place at a time when U.S. steel tariffs and NAFTA are clearly top of mind. In fact, to underscore that point, the county executive from Erie County, New York, was also there to talk about impacts on both sides of the border. Having said that, it was most important that steel producers be heard. 
None spoke more directly than Walter Coppelar, the CEO and chairman of Walter's Group, that is a family-owned and world-class steel construction company based out of Hamilton. He spoke from the heart about the significant impacts his business is facing, but also about the need for Ontario to be a competitive jurisdiction for his company to invest. And that's why I am happy that the Premier was proactive in coming to Hamilton just weeks after being elected. He met with the CEO and Vice President of Defasco. He walked the steel production line. He saw how steel is made. He spoke with workers, and he spoke with business leaders, including Walter. In our discussions that day and with stakeholders since, Ontario's competitiveness has been a consistent theme. And I want to thank the Premier for his commitment, his tireless work day after day in ensuring that Ontario can and will be the economic engine of Canada once again. Well said. That concludes our members' statements for this afternoon.